This card, it was so much fun for me to create and I am excited to walk you through the process. Um, so we're going to do some stenciling, some stamping, coloring, and die cutting to create this super fun card from the really cute brand new stamp set from Avriel called Ahoy Matey. Look at these, all these cute little characters. We got the octopus, the walrus, this dancing penguin who has decided he's the pirate. <laughs> he's the captain of the ship. Right there is your Captain Jack. Um, we, I love, love, love the parrot balloon. Oh my gosh, that's what sold me on this set. <laughs> um, and so for fun, I challenge myself to two colors, red and blue. To create this and so I was thinking for the video I would challenge myself to two other colors so maybe this time around I'm gonna do this shade of blue that was more of a peacock like a turquoise I'm gonna do blue like ocean blue in fact it's called salty ocean and uh, this twisted citron this bright neon green color okay yes I did cheat a little bit I used a third color I did use gray <laughs> So I'm going to use a brand new Lost Shadow, and I use it on both, actually. So where the gray is, I just needed a little something to enhance the the walrus a little bit and the hat. So it's very minimal, but you can do it without. But it's fun to challenge yourself, huh? I'm, I'm going to use a mini die cutter machine as well. But let's get started, huh? Okay, I'm going to set this aside. So my name is Janine. I am the paper crafts buyer for Craft Warehouse. And I am so excited today to get to play in front of you all. Um, feel free to ask your questions or um, give your comments in the comment section below. Hi, Tracy. You say that you you love the Stampin' Dice sets. Yeah, they are. It's really great. And you know what I love about the Avriel um, die sets? Look at this. Because it's all... Um, uh, because it's Avriel brand, I should say, doesn't have any of, everything's already been trimmed for you. So you don't have any of those annoying, uh, you don't have to take any time to cut apart all the metal die. So that's cool. They can just peel and peel and use. So that's pretty cool. So for all my stamping, I stamped in black ink. This is my personal preference, but another really great one would be Hero Arts Intense Black or... Um, reaching, pardon my reach, or Ranger Archival Black Ink. All three of these were are fantastic black inks in my opinion, and I've been stamping for a lot of years. I just like this one as my general overall, but they all are great. And this one, if you're going to choose to color with alcohol-based markers, this would be a great one for you to use. Or if you do are if you are doing alcohol-based markers, another option would be Memento. So these two are great for that. I'm not going to use alcohol-based markers. I'm going to use water-based markers and water-based ink pads. So both of these are great for watercolor. So whichever works for you. All right. So I stamped all of that. I stamped all my little characters and stuff in this ink on some white paper. And I'm using uh, plain white 100-pound uh, paper. I am doing a little bit of watercolor, so that I want a heavier, nicer quality paper. Watercolor paper would also work great for this. Okay. Um, so you can see I already kind of started with my new color palette. I'm going to get rid of these reds and blues. Bring in my, or my reds and blue and turquoise. I'm going to do blue and green. What do you guys think of the challenge of a two color challenge? It's fun, huh? Okay. So those are the colors I'm going to use. These are just Tombow markers, but you could use any water-based marker. Most kids' markers are water-based, FYI. I'm going to start with my background. So I want to make this really cool ray background to me so this is sun rays it's meant to go this direction but you can use it any way you want to from lawn fawn i think it looks cool when because you can make sort of an underwater scene with it as well fun for mermaids or turtles or sea life or anything like that so let's get, bring in our um let's see i tested my colors <laughs> uh bring in our mat to um do our stenciling on so this is the Make Art Station mat. Now, if you have a glass mat, like I have underneath this, the black one, that will work too. Um, but I just wanted to show you how the Station Art, the Station Make Art mat works. So it's a metal board. This is the full size. There's also a travel size available. And they, either size comes with these really big, chunky magnets that are very strong. And they hold your stuff down. Quarter inch grid, just like this one. And it also comes with a centering ruler that is magnetic. So I've lined up a piece of that same white color cardstock, which is going to be my panel that I do the stenciling on. And I've taped it down in some areas and used the magnets in others. And I'm going to add my color. 
I'm going to use a blending brush, but you can use a foam tool if you have that instead. And we're going to do the salty ocean instead of the peacock feather. So this should be more blue than the, my turquoise example was. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a media mat. Let me get this stuff out of the way. This media mat is um, just a little piece of silicone. I'm sticking onto my slick surface over here to put my uh, um, ink pad on because then it won't wiggle. See over here, it's going to wiggle when I touch it, but here it'll stay put. Stay put. And this is just a big piece of silicone rubber that you buy as a sheet, and you, I just cut it down to the size that works for me. All right, I'm going to brush off any excess ink onto a roll of paper towels from my blending brush. This, this roll of towels lives in my paper, in my cra paper craft room, not in my kitchen. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to pick up some of this darker blue color. I'm just tapping it off on here to see if I, you know, that I don't overload it. You could certainly do the same thing on this mat instead, okay? And then I'm going to start at the top. I want the color to be more intense at the top and fade down. So I'm going to do circular motions. Set this guy over here. And just very, very lightly a light hand at first. You can always add more. You can't, it's harder to take away. So I'm going to start there. Now, ordinarily, in most stencils, you're going to do a circular motion through the entire thing. This stencil has lots of long lines. It would be very easy to accidentally, see that, uh, push too hard or get the stencil to move. So I'm going to go with the, with the lines of the stencil and kind of go, just follow the line as I blend. Like I say, ordinarily, I would do circles the whole time. But I don't want to ruin my crisp lines of the stencil. So now I'm just going to keep going back and forth between the pad and my um, glass mat here and start filling in. It's really, really fast work. This board is really helping me with the magnetic holder, with holding my, um, my stencil in place. Stenciling is super popular right now. You can find stencils in just about every kind of of um, theme or uh, style. This particular stencil, again, it's called, I believe it's called Sunrays. It's from Lawn Fawn, the brand Lawn Fawn. This is one of my most favorite stencils that I have used time and time again. Also pop, I also use the Cloud stencil, also from Lawn Fawn. That's probably the one I use the most more than anything else, but this one is really fun. Of course, this, this actually little scene could certainly be with clouds in the background because these guys could be, you know, they're obviously for fun, so it can be your world and make it whatever colors you want. In fact, recently we did, I used this stencil to make this card. Let me grab it out here. See how I use it in a coral color, but still sort of an underwater look for my little oxalotl? <laughs> I did this for Valentine's Day. Isn't that cute? Same exact stencil. Color makes a big difference. All right, so I got most of this colored in and it's more intense at the top. Then I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna take the stencil off. Now remember where all the lines of the stencil are are blocking color, not allowing color to go in there. So I'm gonna have very stark white stripes when I lift this up. See that almost like a, if you did this in red, it's almost like a um, circus tent kind of feel. Okay, now it's a little bit stark for my liking. I want to fade. So now I'm going to use whatever's left on my brush here and without the stencil. Now I'm going to go into circular motion. I'm just going to blend, kind of filling in the white and blurring the lines a little bit. And I'm holding up close to the handle here and using a little more pressure. So I'm pushing more from my shoulder than my wrist. And I'm just kind of blending it out totally optional. You don't got to do that, but I think it's fun. You could skip this entire step and just use a piece of blue paper for your background if you don't want all this texture. But I think that is pretty cool. I like that a lot. For cleanup, I just need some water. I have water in a spray bottle here. It works on this mat, metal mat and on my glass mat. And ciao. Get all that blue color up. Now, on my moving on, um, that birthday die cut right here is also um, created with white paper that has been inked. 
So while I have these tools out here, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna switch from, I'm not gonna do red. Instead, I'm going to do that really cool lime green color. And I need a piece of scratch paper. Well, white cardstock that I intend to cut out the birthday card from. And I'm gonna get a new brush that I'm gonna use for green. These blending brushes, the large and medium size, can be bought individually, or we have sets where you can buy a set of two, four, six, and ten. The ten piece set has all different sizes, everything from really big to really teeny. <laughs> so if you're into stenciling, those are awesome. Okay, I want to kind of fade from um, darker to light, kind of like I did the oceany background in the stencil. So I'm gonna put this all over and then I'm gonna put more ink and put heavier pressure towards the top here. That is a bright lime, isn't it? <laughs> that is a nice bright color. Okay, so I have that little fade from, ooh, and the, and the camera looks really yellow. In person, it's very, very green. <laughs> um, it will be, create that cool contrast. See how on the red, it kind of fades down. All right, let's clean that up. If you um, don't have time to watch the video or you want to watch this later, we save all of our videos so you can come back and watch them at your leisure, which I think is, which I think is fun. And then you can actually craft along too if you wanted to. Okay, so I've got those two pieces done for my background and for my die cut. I'll need to die cut that out. I'm looking at this and I feel like I wish it was just a little more of a fade of color. So I'm gonna take my green marker. It's a water-based marker. I'm just, I've been scribble on here. You could also scribble on here. If you don't have either of these things, you could use, let's say you have a stamping block, a clear block, you could scribble on that. Um, or if you have a piece of plastic from a recent, you know, a packaging, you could use that. You just need something non-porous that you can scribble on too. And you can pick up color. I could use my brush again and intensify that color with a little bit of from the marker. That worked pretty well, I like that. If I was using watercolor paper, I could pick this up with a water, um, with a paintbrush and do it that way too. But because the ink I am using is water-based, if I introduce water to this, it is going to change the overall look, which can be cool. Depends on what you're going for. There we go. Now I feel like I have a little bit better fade. You can kind of see it's greener and then kind of dilutes in the color a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. So even though I, I see now, if I wasn't challenging myself to only use two colors, I could pick a different shade of green or a blue and faded that in there. But I challenged myself to only use the two colors. So that's why that is. Okay, we are done with the overall inking like that. I'm gonna move, remove this mat. And we'll set these, set that one aside to dry. The, this will come clean. All I gotta do is run it under some water because I used a water-based um, ink pad. So literally, I'll just run it under water and it'll just go clean and then you just dry it on a paper towel. Make sure that you um, clean between colors and uh, clean, uh, if you are using anything that's not water-based, clean it right away so that it doesn't stain or ruin your stencil. Okay. For the happy birthday, I'm going to use this happy birthday die cut from um, PhotoPlay. There's also a stamp set that goes with this. Let's see if I have it here. I'm not using it on my card today, but I just did want to share that these two go together. So you can, you, you could, instead of die cutting, you could use the stamp or you can use them in conjunction with each other. The, the stamp and the die cut are exactly the same size. So there will be absolutely no halo when you die cut it, but you also get the shadow die cut. And so this will, this will be larger than the die cut of birthday or the stamp of birthday to give you that little outline. So on this sample card, 
the red was made like this with the solid birthday die cut. And then the white in the background was just cutting out the shadow part. So we're going to repeat that. But the cool thing about this stamp set, though, is it has all these fun words to incorporate with the two big prompt um, words. So it could say happy birthday um, to you. Um, someone I was someone I love was born on this day to one of my favorite humans. I love that one. <laughs> Hope your wish comes true on your birthday to my fabulous friend on the birthday. Have an awesome day. Oops, I missed your birthday. Let's eat cake day. So lots of fun. You can mix and match. Okay, let's die cut. I'm gonna use my little baby die cutter. <laughs> this is um, the Sidekick. It is just a tiny, small die cut, great for portability. It has this little lever here that when you push it down, it suctions this big rubber foot to your solid surface, whether you're using glass or you're working on, on your you know, kitchen table, whatever it is, or your counter. Just push, push this um, lever down and it will suction it to your board so it doesn't move around on you. And so you can use it whether you are left-handed or right-handed. Okay, and then it comes with a couple of plates and then you can you can buy more of these as you need to. Um, I've been using these for a couple of years. I still don't need to, but you can see all the little scratch marks in there. That's, what's, that's what they're for. Okay, that's from cutting. Eventually you do have to replace them though. So I have prepared this paper before I inked it with some sticky back um, adhesive on the back of the paper, but you can skip that and just use liquid glue to glue it down later. Okay, I'm going to place this on my little mat, cutting mat, and then I'm going to arrange the birthday so that I'm getting, I want kind of a fade from the green to the lighter or brighter yellowish green, like that. Kind of arrange it where you want. Put your other other cutting plate on top and that is your die cutting sandwich and then crank it through and the pressure of the roller inside of here is pressing the metal into the paper and the cutting blade will cut out your design so there it is i'm not going to peel it out of here because it is sticky back now so i'll wait till i'm ready but i've got my birthday ready to go and while i'm at it i'll go ahead and cut the white um birthday shadow. Die cutting has come a long way. I just backed up here because I saw this was off of the, it was like this. So that little bit was not going to cut. So make sure it's all the way on your paper. You could use some washi tape to hold it down too. If you're, if it's jumping around on you. And there's my shadow piece that's going to fit behind my birthday. So that's all ready to go. I can set that stuff aside. And we'll die cut some more in a little bit, but I'm going to move this out of the way for now. Okay, let's bring back our stamping and stuff, our, the stars of the show. Hi Gwen, I hope you're having a good time watching. Please give me your comments and your thoughts. Okay, so I've got the stamps. I've stamped them in the black ink, like I showed you on white paper, and I'm coloring them in. I'm in that process. So I have a couple of options with my limited color choices here. So I have my markers and my challenge colors, and then I still have those ink pads I've been using. So I also have piece of scratch paper to play with. And I'm gonna use my glass mat to help me. If you don't have a glass mat, you can use a acrylic block, you can use a piece of plastic, a Ziploc baggie, um, something, anything that's non-porous will work. And then I'm going to be applying the color with a paintbrush. And then maybe some water will help. So I'm gonna start by doing it with a marker. I want to make his little shirt that he's this walrus is wearing to be green, have stripes of green. So rather than coloring straight from the marker, because if I color with a marker, it's going to look like I colored with a marker. I don't want that. I want a nice cool fade. Let's see how I did the red. See how he fades, how that color fades from one from darker to lighter. I want to do something like that. So to have more control and to have more variation of color when I'm challenged with only a couple of colors, I'm gonna scribble this marker onto a piece of plastic or my glass mat. I'm gonna put a drop of water next to that. The more water I add, the softer 
the color will be. You need to be using watercolor paper or a, or a heavyweight paper to do this. I'm only going to barely touch the water puddle to get a little bit of green. And then I can make sure my brush isn't too wet. And then I'm going to zoom in so you can see. <laughs> I'm going to color this walrus shirt here. I want it, I want it to be darker on the outside edge, so I'm going to do put more of the intense color right there. Touch the water, and then I'm going to just squish it, whoosh it across. And I'm just lifting my brush as I get to the end. And then it's mostly just water at the end. I'm going to skip a step, skip a stripe, and go down to the next one. And just repeat that process. So I want him to be more intense at the, at the back end here and later at the front. I'm choosing to do that just because he has a very round belly and I'm emphasizing the roundness by doing light and shadow here. There we go. That was fun. Okay, and then let's color in our octopus. He's gonna be blue. Now, technically, I could blend these two colors together and get another color. We'll see. I might do that. But I did challenge to myself to blues and greens. So I think what I'll do instead, or to blue and green, is I can use some of my ink pad. And I can mix these two colors together if I need to. So I'm going to use a um, paper towel and make sure that my get the green off of my brush. Okay. I'm gonna use some of that water, mix it with the blue, test it over here. And then I think I want it to be just a little more intense. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna do my octopus now. Am I in frame? Okay. So I want him to be a lot more intense at, at the top of his head. And then to just fade away into a lighter color. So I'm achieving that by just not reloading my brush with more blue in this space. Okay, and then I want him to be more intense on some of these, um, what do you call these? Tentacles? The word is lost, I've lost the word tentacles, right? I think that's right. So I'm just going to color those in. Now, if you don't want to do this technique, you could use color pencils or even crayons or whatever gets you to color, whatever you like to use. And like I said, if you want to use alcohol ink, just make sure you're using a marker that is, um, if you're using an alcohol-based marker, make sure that you're using an ink pad that is safe for your markers so that they are not damaged. You certainly don't have to do the you know, you certainly could use all the colors in, your, in the rainbow if you wanted to. You do not have to challenge yourself to just two colors. It's just fun for me. Okay, so I have just barely a hint of blue on my brush now. So I want these areas to be light. And now looking at it, he's all, he's all colored in. I want it to be a little bit more intense up here. So I'm just going to make a new color. Paint it where I want it to be light and then get a lot of water on my brush and fade it out. I think watercolor watercoloring is fun because it's um, more free flow and it just looks it's, it's easy to intensify or darken the color by how much water you use. Okay I think that's all of the blue stuff. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I need some gray now. I know that's my cheat color. I'm allowing myself one cheat color. <laughs> So I have a gray marker and or I have the the gray, the, the new gray ink color, which is also pretty cool. Okay, and I'm going to clean off my, because I got a lot of blue on here, I want to clean off my marker or my paintbrush. Let's scrub all that blue out of there. Okay. And we need a drop of water. 
let's see what shade this is. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm just going to highlight my walrus here. Essentially for this, I just want a teensiest hint of color. So it isn't all stark white. So I'm, for the most part, just kind of going to follow his, the line of the stamp. And just essentially sort of outlining it. And not even the entire thing, just here and there a little bit. We'll go around the circumference of his face a little bit, or his neck. There's no definition between a walrus between the head and the neck, apparently. <laughs> At least not in this drawing. And I think he needs a little bit of definition on his mustache. He's very distinguished. That's pretty cute. And I already did that same thing on the hat of my octopus. And I colored in the gray of the hooks and the gray of the top of the message in a bottle. So I think that's good. I'm good with that. You just let that air dry or you can use a heat tool to dry it. I hope that that is interesting to you guys that you haven't done something like that before, figuring out how to color like that. So hopefully you learned something. <laughs> I'm going to speed this process up of drying it with my heat tool. Is this a fun color combination? What color com if you had to only pick two colors to recreate this card, what two colors would you pick? Go crazy. I mean, remember how I used like this coral? for this ocean one with my oxalotl. I, this one's kind of the same idea, it's just coral and yellow. So what would you use? Purple might be a fun color, purple and what? Orange would be fun. Orange because orange and blue are like opposite on the color wheel, so those might look really cool together. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of all this coloring stuff. We're done with that. Done with my scrap papers. I think it's time to die cut. Now this piece of paper is larger than my cutting plates are for my little machine here. So as long as the die cut or stamped image is no larger than my plate, I can use, I'll be able to use it. So as long as this walrus fits on there, it's gonna work just fine. I'm gonna grab the walrus die cut from my sheet here and let's just make sure he can fit on here if he can't i'll have to get out my bigger die cut nope look he's gonna fit just barely but i need to cut this paper down to in order for it to fit i don't know if i can yeah we'll do these guys separately we'll get the big one out of the way <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna line up my die cut. So the die cuts have a bumpy side and a smooth side. Bumpy side is the side that cuts. Line it up over your die cut image. And then if you want to, you can use a bit of washi tape or low tack tape to secure the die cut in place because we want that perfect little halo around him if we can manage it. Okay, let's see if I can make this fit on this piece of paper here. Just gotta cut the corners off. See how I'm making it work? <laughs> I think that's gonna die cut. Okay, well, let's try it. Put my little footy down. Stabilize. Oh yeah. And just carefully remove the tape. There he is in all his glory. So he's going to be living on this. Oh, look at that green and the blue. They look awesome together. He looks like he's under a spotlight right now, doesn't he? <laughs> okay. Save our die cut here and put him back on however you store them. I do like to um, store them in on a uh, magnetic sheet so I don't lose them. All right, let's do the octopus. And the parrot, they need to be able to fit. The parrot balloon, I think, is just a hilarious. OK, 
okay, good. We can cut both of these at the same time. So we'll get that guy. And then we need our parrot balloon, which I think is this die cut. And some washi tape. All right, I'm gonna arrange this on here. It's kind of like a satisfying puzzle piece. It's like, it's like when you know you have the right piece. <laughs> and it's just about getting it to fit just right. There's something very satisfying about that. Okay, and then we will repeat with my parrot balloon set here. All right. Make our sandwich. Feed it through. So if you have a, if you're thinking of a bigger die cut, this process of making the sandwich and cranking it through is the same. It's just you have more space to work with. Bigger machines can also do other things like embossing and that sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> we've got that and we've got the cute octopus. He is adorable. Okay, and he's gonna hold that. And then if you want to, you can also die cut out the other little bits. I have the little message in a bottle <laughs> and the hooks, which are hilarious. It's kind of like they're playing dress up. So on my original, I've given the um, octopus a hook <laughs> so he can play at that. And so those die cuts are all right here on this. Like you get all those die cuts. There's also a sword and a treasure chest and little coins. There's another little walking bird if you wanted to use that guy. Super fun. Okay, I'm not gonna die cut those, but you get the idea. All right. Let's assemble. So I'm gonna use a plain white card base. Here's the cards that I'm using. If you use pre pre um, cut cards, one side, I don't know if you can see this. There we go. One side has a divot and one side has a bubble. The bubble is the inside. You'll, it's not, it's not the end of the world if you don't do it, the bubble between the inside, but it, you'll notice that it folds much easier. If you make and score your own cards, the, the side you're scoring on is the outside. The bubble is the inside. It's just how that's how, just how the paper stretches. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this panel to here. You can use liquid glue or score tape or whatever kind of tape or adhesive you prefer. Liquid is definitely more economical. And this is the one I like the most is um, Mono Multi from Tombow. Comes in a couple sizes. Lawn Fawn also has a brand, uh, one that's very, very similar. It's a really strong hold. I've been using it for 25 years. Honestly, I have this with this one. Um, here's what it looks like in the package and it's great for chipboard. It's great for photos. It's great for embellishments, for glitter, um, for small things, for die cuts, for paper. It's a very strong hold. It comes out white, dries clear. If you want to, you can use it as a temporary adhesive and to use it as temporary, you put it on, let it dry till it's a little bit clear and tacky. And then that's why it's called multi because then you can use it as a temporary adhesive or a permanent. It also has two tips, a small tip and a broad tip. I just, it's just a very well thought out. The formula has not changed in all these years and it is just, it's that good of a glue. If you really, but you have to be, you have to be light handed. Don't go heavy handed with, with liquid glue. If you're just not a liquid glue person, I would use score tape. I like my I like my uh, card making to stay. I want the the papers and the layers to all be stuck together. So when I send it to someone in the mail or hand it to them, it doesn't fall apart. Or if they put it on their fridge, it's not going to fall down. Okay, so I've got my background, and then I'm going to be wanting to mount the birthday that we created earlier to the background. So I'm going to lift this off. Remember I had sticky pack paper on the back of this, this die cut. 
There's a few pieces of the inside of the letters that need to be removed. So I'm just going to use a little die pick to move those out of there. Okay, now this whole thing is sticky. And we're going to stick it to its shadow die cut version of itself. You can use it with or without the shadow. I just think it's kind of fun with the shadow. So that's going to live right there. But I want to be able to stamp... Arr, I forgot your on there. Now, the stamp actually is a complete sentence. Arr, I forgot your birthday. But I don't need birthday because I'm using this as a birthday. So, I've mounted the stamp onto a clear block. And I need to not ink this birthday part. So, what I'm going to do is take a bit of washi tape. There's so many uses for washi tape. Um, for this technique, you could also use a post-it note. And I'm going to use this to cover up. So I've got the sticky side here. I'm looking at the birthday through here and I'm covering up the line of the stamp right between the word year <laughs> and birthday. So now when I turn this over to add ink, the ink will only be able to stick to the parts of the stamp that are visible or not taped over. And very important before stamping, Remove this because see how there's ink on there. Let's remove that and get rid of this guy. And now I only have the parts of the stamp inked that, there we go. I only have the parts of the stamp inked that are not on the birthday. If you're concerned, you can also take a clean um, stamping cloth or paper towel or baby wipe and clean off that part. Okay. I'm going to lay this back on here so I have a reference for my space. You could use a pencil here if you are concerned. And then I'm going to arrange this where I want it. And stamp. I'm not pressing hard, but I'm letting the ink soak into the paper. There we go. See, I got that for... Er, I forgot your, and I got no birthday. <laughs> and then I'll just clean that up and remove this. This clings like a window cling. And put it back into the carrier sheet. So it's ready to stamp again next time. Okay. Now I can glue this guy down if I want to, but let's arrange all our little characters and see what, they, what it looks like. So I'm thinking that'll go there. We've got the walrus guy. Oh my gosh, it's so cute with the green. He's gonna like sort of be swimming above the arg, I forgot. And then we've got the balloons. Oh my gosh, it is cute in the green, isn't it? And I kind of dig the salty ocean from my blue. What do y'all think? Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Sally. Sunny's watching. Sandra likes the background. Vernon and Valerie are here. Jill, Sandra, hi guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue all this down. I'm gonna think I'm gonna glue um, the octopus and the balloons flat. So I'm gonna use my same liquid glue. You could use your tape printer or your, oh, I don't need to glue them, I forgot. I cut these out with, I put these on sticky back. Even easier, so now I have edge to edge coverage. I glued these with it with that glue. This one I thought ahead and trying to make my life easier. <laughs> and the balloons, the same thing. So that one I had the hook. This one I don't. I'm just gonna kind of tuck it, put it right on top of his little tentacle. And we'll glue this piece flat too. He also has a sticky back. Just slightly off the edge a little. I, I wasn't sure if I would like the green, but I really like it. Now I've got sticky back on here, but I think this will look cuter with a little bit of dimension. If you don't want to do the dimension, just stick it flat. But I'll put a little bit of foam tape here, just so this one stands out a little bit more. Oh, there we go. That is adorable. For some added fun, I have a gel pen, a white gel pen that I could use or I have a sparkly gel pen you either of those those are both jelly roll um, if you want to add a little bit of 
uh, enhancement, I'm going to get a piece of paper that I can scribble on just to make sure that my ink is flowing. And I'm going to go into his little tentacles here and I'm going to try to add some of those little like suction cup. That's sort of the look I'm going for. So white ink is quite thick, no matter what brand you're using. I also really like the, um, there's a couple of white gel inks that I really like, but um, no matter the case, you need to go really slowly and let the ink flow around the tip of the metal ball because otherwise it just will look like a scratch mark and nothing will really happen. I'm going to give you, I'll bring this up so you can see the little, see the little white dots I've created there with a gel pen. That's really cute. We'll color in his little mouth with the white. And gel pens need a little bit of time to dry, even if you're right-handed, so try to not, not touch them. I'll do the walrus. Is it teeth or fangs? I don't know. His big old chompers right here. I'm going to make him white. Just extra, extra white. It gives a little shine. And then we'll do a little shine mark on the balloon, which is dry now. On the solid balloon. Maybe I'll fill in the skeleton eyeballs <laughs> on the hat just make them a little bit brighter white also if you had colored outside the lines anywhere I'm looking for where I may have done that right here at the top of his hat right here see how my green went over the line just a hair I can use this white as a little camouflage and just go right over top of my mistake to hide it now it is gone I think I did the same thing on one of these tentacles. Yeah, right here on this edge, there's a little, there go. There's a little bit of blue hanging over. Oh, you can see I smeared the lines a little. I'm just gonna cover that up. Boom. So gel pin to the rescue. <laughs> All right, let's back up a little here. And there we have our challenge, two color challenge. What do you like better, red or the green? Red and turquoise or blue and green? Gosh, that was so fun. You know what? I'm going to do a two-color challenge again with a Riel product. The next one is going... I've got, a, I've got a sample of it here. The next one is going to be Friday, April 14th. So next Friday, same time, we're going to do this cute slimline card. This is A slimline just means it's the size of the card. It just fits into a regular business size envelope. But isn't this so cute? And I challenge myself to just use yellow and pink. That's my colors and I stack all my little characters up. That's really fun. We'll do that on April 14th, one week from now. There's also stenciling and die cutting in that one. If you'd like to learn more about our events, you can look on an, on the Facebook page you're on now, but look under the events tab and you can find out all of the events happening in April. And then if you are into this kind of um, stuff, please, if you're not already a member of our private paper crafts Facebook group, you could join that. We have a free club every month and we have more content like this and you can share um, cards and, and scrapbook pages and planners and whatever else you're creating with paper, with paper crafts and, and join sort of a like-minded community if you like to. All right. Sandra says that she likes the red and turquoise. Yeah, the red is definitely striking for sure. And very, um, very nautical. Wait, what brand is, was your gel pen? The one I used is um, a Jelly Roll. And this one we sell in a three pack, which was, has three different sizes, I think. So this was, a, this was a, I think, the, the thickest or boldest one. Uh, Uniball Broad White is also a very good. Those are, these are the two best gel pens. Uniball White and... Um, jelly roll white white ink white paint white paint white is the hardest color <laughs> and so when you find a good white you got to share it speaking of that i'll share my the best white ink pad it is hero arts unicorn pigment ink this is the whitest white all other whites look like skim milk this looks like heavy cream that's, that's how i can relate to it it's white <laughs> um renee says she likes the jelly roll yeah it is a good brand for sure. And the jelly roll, you we you know, you get all different colors and metallics and pastels and all good stuff. 
Okay, I think I answered the questions. Tracy said it was all full of good tips. Good. Uh, Judy likes the green. Okay, good. The background was fun, is a really fun background. Okay, you guys, I will see you uh, next time. I'll definitely be here next Friday. <laughs> and then tomorrow in our stores, if you're gonna, if you're near one of our stores, uh, from two to four, we have a fun event. Painting either your choice of a tulip or a butterfly, and there's a coupon. <gasps> Did I say that? <laughs> All right, see you next time. Happy crafting. <laughs>